Welcome back to Close Listening. I'm Zach Morgenstern, joined as always by silent co-host Ludwig von B. So I was walking through a library in Toronto the other day, the Thorncliff branch, as you can see, and I found this CD, Arctic Rose, by Susan Aglukak in their music section. Go going to school in Canada, you sort of get bombarded with lists of people who are Canadian, because at least when I was in school, patriotism was in vogue that, you know, even though Canada and America are basically the same country, everything that was Canadian had to be played up for the sake of it being Canadian. Now, of course, there's there's a range of figures you learn about. So it turns out that some of those names that were thrown in your face all the time, like Gordon Lightfoot or Joni Mitchell or whoever, turn out, yeah, just to be a big deal. I remember actually my, I don't remember if it was in grade seven, seventh or eighth grade, but my science teacher was teaching us about Tuzo Wilson, who was an important scientist with plate tectonics. And he'd say, yes, he was Canadian and some people here might have connections to him, but I promise we are learning about him, not because he's Canadian, but because he's an actually important scientist. So occasionally there'd be these, you know, musicians or popular figures or whatever who would come up in our textbooks uh, Sir Lynn Dion was one, and hers was a name I didn't see very much until I went to Quebec, and then I got it a bit more. But another one was Susan uh, Glucock, and uh, it just occurs to me that I really haven't seen her since we were just, you know, <laughs> perforated with CanCon in high school. And I thought that was a shame because, you know, just even if our school only cares about these people because they count as Canadian, it doesn't mean they aren't good artists. It doesn't mean they didn't deserve to be heard more. Uh, so I was interested in hearing uh, what Susan Aglukak had to sing about. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't know for sure how uh, she identifies. So she uh, she is Inuit, so uh, the indigenous, one of the indigenous peoples of northern Canada. So I know some indigenous people would identify exclusively as their nation. Some would identify as both their nation and Canadian. But anyway, the point is I came across this person who sang a lot of topical songs from an Inuit perspective because our schools bombarded us with anything that counted as Canadian. So that said, let's go through the songs on what turned out to be Susan Aglukak's uh, debut, debut record, Arctic Rose. So the first song in the album is the title track. It is called Arctic Rose. And I think it's probably the best song on on the record. Uh, it's mostly in English, though it does use some in a uh, language, which is a recurring theme. And the verse tells the story of an Inuk man who travels to a city and becomes terminally depressed through alienation from his culture. And the verses switch to something more abstract. And I, I, I noticed this having read some comments from Susan Glucock saying that, yes, she sings from her own experience, but she would like to think her songs are more universally resonant. So the chorus goes, it's such a careless waste of life to pick the Arctic rose. So the Arctic rose may be something beautiful. It may be your instinct to pick a beautiful flower, but you know the flower grows in the ground. It does not grow when it's picked. And that is a message that could apply with lots of cultures. So I, I would say what the song does is it plays with the importance of subjectivity. Uh, and attentiveness to people's needs. So in the first verse, uh, they talk about how it's dark half the year in the North, but darkness, while darkness might be near universally seen as a scary thing, she says, this literal darkness might be less scary for some people, i.e. the people of the North than alienation from their culture. So it's this sort of upbeat, but quite dark, protest song about how you can't separate the Arctic rose from its roots. Track number two is called Song of the Land. Uh, it has a similar structure in that the verse seems specific to a glucox or at least to the Inuit experience, uh, references the beauty of the tundra and wild geese, but then the chorus, chorus takes a more universalist approach. The chorus goes, it's the song of the land and the heart of the common man, raise your voice and join hands, sing the song of the land. So it sort of serves as an embrace for all people to take on this approach, which is common amongst many of certainly North America's and I would assume the world's native peoples of identifying with uh, the land uh, they live on rather than more statist uh, conceptions of patriotism. So how I would describe the song on this record so far 
I guess kind of John Denvery and that it's folk, but a sort of very bright uh, folk. It sounds like it's being sung by a very happy person. Uh, and it particularly reminds me of one of John Denver's later albums called One World, where I like a lot of songs on that record, particularly the opener. It, it sort of comes from an era of the emergence of synth where uh, to things, things recorded not to, to ears that are not immediately from that era, it, it can sound a little cheesy at time. So I guess this is this is perhaps one of the reasons this album doesn't quite become as commercial as some of the interesting lyrics might make one think it should. Track number three is called Still Running uh, and reading a Glucox, what the little bit I did of a Glucox biography, I one would think the song is alluding to childhood sexual abuse. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's solid lyrics. It uses folk music to do a sort of subtle protest song about not being properly cared for, about not being able to have good support systems. But there's something about that early 90s folk pop sound that to modern ears doesn't just quite fit the tone of the song. Uh, so it's, it's kind of similar to the first two, it's just by this point on the record, you might expect a bit more of a tone change than we're getting. Track number four, we do get a bit of a change of sound. It's called The Wandering Child, and it has more of a pronounced guitar finger picking to it. So it th makes me think more of classic singer songwriters. Uh, the combination of that sound, a Glucox voice here, and, and some of the lyrics makes me think maybe of Carly Simon. So some of the songs on this record are uh, co-written by a Glucox, such as Arctic Rose uh, and Still Running, but not all of them are. So Wandering Child is, slowly, is solely credited to someone who co-wrote with her on other tracks called John Park Wheeler. So I, I guess the fact that this is one of the few tracks on this record that is written by one person as opposed to being a collaboration, you know, maybe gives it that singer-songwriter feel. It's someone directly expressing a perception of the world rather than a committee getting together to say, how can we write a good song about a particular social issue? I don't know. But anyway, this feels like the most singer songwritery song on the record. Uh, track number five is called Learn to Love Yourself. Uh, it's one that a uh, opens with, with a spoken bit, uh, dedicating it to all children. Uh, it has a big 80s synth sound and the lyrics are kind of a call to solidarity. Track number six is called Searching. Uh, again, we're hearing some synths, but this time they have a kind of frostier sound. I don't know why we think of synths as having the sound. They do, but that's what I think. It sort of has an Arctic feels to it. There's this video essay uh, by the YouTuber Big Joel on Frozen 2, and he's largely positive about the movie, but he's saying the one way in which the, you can tell that the movie is a fairy tale, and to spoil his essay and to spoil Frozen 2, you basically find out that uh, the, their princesses are half the equivalent of the Sami people uh, and indigenous people of Northern Europe and uh, half white European. And they learn that their white European ancestors uh, committed an act of murder and betrayal to conquer some land. Uh, and by making certain decisions, they are able to sort of undo this and reestablish these independent, equally thriving kingdoms. And uh, the reason why Big Joel says this sort of, this kind of ends up being feeling like a fairy tale is because the effect of colonization is to disrupt historical kingdoms that, you know, even where people can get rid of their direct oppressor, there's not a direct link back to their old past. There's not an old kingdom just waiting to be resumed existing that just because you're, you know, decolonized means the having the freedom to rework yourself out and try and create something supposedly independent, but you do have to truly build again and put to puzzle pieces. It's confusing and unsettling. And so this was a theme I forgot to mention in track four, The Wandering Child. And it certainly is a met theme in the song, Search it's Searching. So a Glucox sings, I can't live the way my people lived. I wouldn't understand anyway, but something deep inside keeps telling me there's got to be another way. So again, for her finding her identity 
might mean living in the spirit of the old ways, but also acknowledging that maybe she can't live in the old ways and maybe she doesn't 100% want to. Track number seven is called Anger and Tears. So this one is co-written by Aglukok and Wheeler. Uh, and it has, it has similar themes uh, to Still Running, though this one focuses more on the trauma of dreams. There's some Christian elements uh, on this record. Uh, there's a quote from John on the sleeve, and there begins to be references to prayer in this one. Uh, so I suppose that separates it a bit from a lot of other activist music. It, it's nothing that any non-Christians would find offensive or problematic. It's just it's clearly a part of Black Lukak is and something she figures into her songwriting. Track number eight is called Rolling On. Uh, it has big drums and piano, and I feel like it creates an upbeat transition to try and lead you out of the sadness of anger and tears. And the theme of this one seems to be using adulthood to resolve the pain of child childhood. So there's this line that goes, wasn't it just the other day that I was only eight years old? Is as if uh, you can think of yourself not as having endured those traumas and they left a permanent stain on your life, but rather you can start that journey right where it was disrupted and feel yourself. You don't have to worry that it was so many years ago. You can still somehow save the child in you. Track number nine is called Mama's Prayers. This one is a more of an overt country sound and coincidentally or not, as you can tell from the title, plays with more of the religiousness. Uh, and then this leads up to track number 10, which is Amazing Grace, sung entirely in an uptutut and performed as an a cappella record. So this was the record before what counted as Susan Aglukok's big breakout. And, you know, obviously I was not in, in the room when this album was planned. It's possible these songs were all independently written. But I suppose my one critique of it would be that maybe there's a bit too much of a concept that the song is supposed to be in this album set out to entirely be about expressing uh, her feelings of alienation from her culture and trauma when perhaps she'd get a stronger album if what she did is she included the best songs on those themes. So Arctic Rose, Song of the Land, Wandering Child and Searching but then maybe for the other songs on the record just expresses whatever else, uh, just writing other kinds of songs, you know, not because there's a problem with being too political or expressing yourself too much, but I just feel like some of those songs were maybe forced for the sake of making the whole album one thing and making it coherent. Uh, but anyway, there I certainly found some underrated songs on here. Uh, and again, the Arctic Rose, great song, should be a classic, and I look forward to listening to more Susan at Glutcott going forward. Anyway, I'm Zach Morgenstern. This is Ludwig von B. See you next time. Mm -hmm.